Chapter Northwest was founded several years ago because of the exceptional beauty that's found in the community. You know, many people recognize the external beauty of the costumes and the artwork, but the most important beauty is the beauty that's inside each one of you. <laughs> the theme Growth Beyond Self uh, is a theme that we chose this year, and we have two exceptional guests of honor who are wonderful examples of that. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to introduce you to Kitwana Lion. He's all the way here from Switzerland. <laughs> We chose him because he's a fantastic example of exceptional growth, both within himself and also he gives exceptional service to those around him in the world. The service to others has helped him grow inside and be more connected to the world around him. You know, when you help others, you tend to grow yourself, and his story is going to be shared during the Thanksgiving feast on Saturday, and I'd like to encourage all of you to go and uh, hear about what he's been through. Um, my it's also my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Kajani Lyon. <laughs> Kajani has also given tremendous service to the fandom. Um, he's helped it grow both near and far. Um, he's helped so many people experience the beauty and love that's found in the fandom. You know, most people find, a lot of people find Furry for the first time in Kajani's YouTube channel. He really showcases the best that our community has to offer. Um, he's also the founder of Emerald City Critters. Uh, that's a charity group that goes around and does costume performance uh, for good causes and charities and things like that. He's also the lead organizer of Fur Life, and he uh, hosts the world's largest furry uh, bowling meet. So he's a bowling lion too, <laughs> many times. So one of the things that's really special about him too is through his YouTube presence and his meetup presence, um, a lot of times he helps mentor people that are new to the fandom and kind of bring them in in a way that's um, really healthy and beneficial to the fandom. Um, so they're very special guests of honor. Um, he's also going to be giving a presentation at the Thanksgiving feast. Uh, we have a lot of people feasting, so if you can't get into this room, we have overflow seating downstairs, and we also have uh, channel 19 of all your televisions will be showing uh, what's going on in the main ballroom all convention long. And we also have YouTube streaming as well for all the main events. So we are super lucky to have both of these lines as guests of honor this year. If you guys see them around, give them a big hug and uh, just thank them so much for their service. Right. Thanks, you guys. This year we've got uh, two very special charities. Survey Wildlife is back again for a third year. Uh, I'd encourage you guys to stop by their booth in the hallway and check out all the stuff that they're doing to help animals in need. Um, they help wild animals, um, they get hit by cars and things like that. Um, and their mission is to rescue, rehabil rehabilitate, and then release them back into the wild. Um, they're performing a really important service uh, for all our, our friends in needs. Um, we've also partnered with Summit Assistant Dogs this year. Uh, they're a new charity. Um, they're very well funded, but they're looking for a lot of people to help train assistive dogs. Um, so they, they have a program where they train assistive dogs to help disabled people. And we figured, you know, people like here tend to like animals a lot. So it'd be great to have them here. And maybe some of you guys would consider stopping by their booth and learning what a joy it can be to help train a dog for someone in need. It's a wonderful, loving thing to do. Um, they're also hosting some uh, panels. A lot of them have live animals, like live eagles. We have a bat panel with live bats, and of course, some of the assistant dogs will have their dogs and puppies on site uh, this year. So we're, we're very excited to welcome both of those charities this year. I want to talk a little bit about our theme, Growth Beyond Self. It needs a little bit of explaining. You know, there's, there's a lot of things in the fandom that facilitate growth. Um, a lot of it starts with the diverse group of people we have here, uh, incredibly varied backgrounds. And just having that opens people up to new ideas and new experiences. You then mix that with a supportive atmosphere that encourages exploration, learning, and trying new things. And I like to say Growth Beyond Self because together with the fandom,
we grow a lot better as a community than by ourselves uh, with the help of others. Many of us here in the fandom have experienced or witnessed the powerful growth through the act of costume performance. Often people, when they put on a costume, what manifests themselves is a reflection of the person who they're trying to become or their idealized self. When you have a costume on, all the externals, they tend to fall away. You know, there's no race, there's no gender, there's no body image, there's no disability. What you're really left with is the essence of the person on the inside, unencumbered by all the externals. Once the costume is off, you know, sometimes we find that the person on the inside is more like their character, or maybe they're less like their character. You know, the reality is the costume is a tool to facilitate growth and transformation. You've got to remember that it takes a great deal of effort, a great deal of time, sacrifice, and tears and love to really achieve growth. I hope that we can all grow together, that we can grow beyond ourselves. May this growth be into a more beautiful and loving community. The panelists are ready. The artists are here. The performers have arrived. The volunteers are standing by. Now let the convention begin. <laughs> A lot of great speakers, including our guests of honor. We've got the ch two charity sponsors that we have, um, and some special musical guests. So it should be a pretty good program. So thank you so much for being here for the Furry Friends Thanksgiving. As a community, we really have a lot to be thankful for. I'm thankful for all of you, and all of you that just <laughs> that make this possible. You know, you're not really just an attendee, but each and every one of you are the foundation of what the convention is. You are the dream of Anthro Northwest. As a community, I think we can all be thankful that we belong to a group that promotes love, kindness, inclusiveness, sharing, and friendship. I think we're really lucky that we all belong to a community that is incredibly generous. You know, whether it's helping out with our time, and just being a volunteer, giving a helping paw, or even financial resources. We see furries putting other people before themselves. I think that's very beautiful. We should also be thankful for the beauty in our fandom. You know, there's so much around it. We see it in the costumes and the art, but the most important beauty is the beauty that is inside of each one of you. May your time here help each one of you increase in thankfulness through the joy, kindness, and beauty that we find in each other. So we've got a special Thanksgiving program for all of you to enjoy. Um, and now the guests of honor are going to share with you their stories of personal growth. We've got two lion guests of honor this year. It is my great pleasure to present to you both Kitwana Lion, who will be going first, and Kajani Lion, both exceptional members of the furry community. Oh, with great surprise, I have learned that Andrew Northwest has chosen me as the guest of honor for 2019. My way through life and into the furry fandom has been a long and winding journey. Born with a birth defect diagnosed as congenital varicella syndrome, I had to learn from my very beginning to battle and overcome challenges from dealing with my feeding tube, various side effects, visiting school, finding friends, and living an independent life. As my health improved, I eventually began traveling to the US with the help of my parents, especially my dad, who is here in the audience. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Having grown up with movies like The Lion King and The Jungle Book, I have developed a love for Walt Disney World, where I had the privilege to witness many magical character interaction moments. And as a sports fan, I was amazed at the sight of mascots, something pretty unknown in my home country of Switzerland. And I grew a high respect for what they do both on and off the field. It was during my darkest times 
the time is spending 100 to 150 days a year in bed, where I would browse the internet for mass cutting and character performance uh, videos. I ultimately discovered the YouTube channel of a fluffy lion from Seattle <laughs> named <Fluffy> Kitsani, <laughs> who, would, who would spread smiles, hugs and joy to everyone around him, kids young and old with his performances. Kitsani helped me smile even during times I had very few reasons to. He quickly became an idol, someone I would look, look up to. Before then, I had no idea that something like the furry fandom would exist. After watching one of his first shooting for the kids videos, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to, sp I wanted to start spreading character performance magic myself. For a long time, Seattle was too far away for me. There were many moments where I dreamed that someday one of the creators performing next to Kitsani would be me. But would my body tolerate the physical stress that comes with performing an animal mascot costume? Well, the ability to test drive a fursuit on a 90 degrees day in my hometown of Lucerne, Switzerland would eventually answer that question. Yes, I would, even though the first time it really was brutal. <laughs> I began to develop my own lion persona named Kidwana, whose name means this time to survive in Swahili, and I debuted the first costumed version of him in early 2015, and here at the convention you see me in my new Kidwana fursuit that's been around since uh, July of this year. I started performing. Despite the challenges I have to battle while, while doing so, which doesn't prevent me from having fun. Performing for those who need it most, like the special needs kids and adults at my workplace. Performing for my grandparents, for the random child encountering me in the public. I started putting Kidwana's adventures on YouTube. At the same time, my health improved, allowing me to travel and live on my own. Kitsani eventually made the first step and contacted me. Over time, we went from exchanging messages to our first highly emotional meet at AnthroCon 2016 in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Imagine someone you have admired for years suddenly standing in front of you pass wide open for that first talk. My idol became a best friend and the biggest inspiration of mine. We have learned from each other's challenges and successes. We exchanged tips and teamed up on so many occasions to spread character performance magic to those around us. Little did I know that one day my dream would indeed become true and I would be one of the creators performing at the side of my idol, helping to make the world smile. The furry fandom has allowed me to give back to the community what I received. The furry fandom has helped me to find like-minded, like understanding friends near and far and become a more complete person as well as a positive, cuddly, six-foot-tall lion. <laughs> it is with great humbleness that I have been given the opportunity to share the guest of honor of being a guest of honor here with my biggest friend and idol, Kitsani Lion, who deserves this so much more than I do. I'm just doing my little part to make this fandom and the world around me a better place. Thank you so much for spending your time here with me at Antro Northwest. and so your meal as well as the rest of the convention. And before I go off stage, I want to please ask Kitsani to come up, because I have, oh, here we are. I have something for you that I know that you will really, really like. It's a small, small thank you for being my friend and uh, do, doing so many things together with me. And 
be such a huge inspiration and you really mean a lot in my life. And it's, it's good to have you, good to know you. Well, thank you so much, Rito, for those kind words. Uh, Kiwana, for those uh, kind words. It really means so much to me. Oh, boy. Um, thank you all, uh, Anthony Northwest, Gabriel, especially, for this great honor. Uh, I've been volunteering for this convention since the very beginning, and it's been so incredible to see it blossom into the amazing and really much-needed success it has become for the Pacific Northwest furry community and beyond. Uh, it's very appropriate that Anthony Northwest's theme this year is growth, uh, because it's really hard to put into words how much being involved with the fandom has helped me grow in so many aspects of my life. Um, I was always the shy kid going up through school. Uh, I played sports, but I didn't fit in with the jocks. I was a good student, but I didn't fit in with the straight A, you know, advanced placement level brainiacs that were my friends at the time. I never raised my hand in class, and I dreaded public speaking uh, to the point where the mere thought of giving a presentation or doing anything like this would leave me with crippling anxiety. I didn't have much friends in college either. Uh, I was still living at home at the time, but I was fortunate to find the Lion King fandom back in about 2004. And at that time, my interest in anthropomorphic animals started to grow. Uh, for the first time in my life, I think a lot of you can relate to this as well, I discovered that there were people just as obsessed with Lion King as, as I was, and that I was not alone. Um, but over time, I found myself admiring furry art more and more, and literature. So one fateful day in 2008, I decided to really do some research on this furry thing. You know, I really wanted to find out what this community was all about. So I found myself watching a YouTube video of fursuiters in London making people smile. And at that time, I decided I wanted to be a part of that. As much as I love lions, what would be cooler than performing as my own lion character and brightening the world around me? So that very day, I joined the fandom and created Kijani, which means warrior in Swahili. And I got my first fursuit commission. I started creating videos from fursuit outings and at conventions. And back then, there weren't that many furry YouTubers, at least nothing like it is today. Uh, but so many watchers of my content were being introduced to the fandom for the first time, and they sent me messages with questions wanting to know more about this unique and diverse community. And it's really been a privilege to be able to mentor them, uh, many of them, along their path. Uh, in some cases, the, the fandom has completely changed their lives for the better, and in their own words, gave them a sense of purpose that they didn't have before. Um, other people, other times people would watch one of my, say, First Union for the Kids videos and say it inspired them to create a costume of their own and spread the joy and the magic of First Union uh, around their own hometowns. And I've always said, if I can inspire just one person, one person to help make the world a better place, then all those thousands of hours of video recording and editing is worth it. And to me, that, that's the meaning of the convention theme. Uh, it's the true meaning of growth beyond self, and it's one of the things I'm most proud of uh, my time in the fandom. And locally, I've tried to do as much as I can as well. I founded uh, When Furball Strike back in 2008. I don't know a lot of you in this room have been to it. It's the uh, local fur bowl we have here in Seattle. Uh, over the next 11 years, it grew into the largest, world's largest furry bowling event. And the most important thing is it brings our amazing community together every three months. And it's so much fun to see everyone. Uh, about five years ago, I took over the ownership of uh, Fur Life, Pacific Northwest Furries, our meetup group. Uh, we were literally days away from losing the group. Uh, we had 1,800 members at the time, and I just couldn't let that happen. So today, we are more than 3,500 members strong in Fur Life, and we're uh, still true to our goal. Thank you. We're still true to our goal in giving the Pacific Northwest furry fans a way to connect, have fun, and meet each other through the great events hosted by our very own members. Uh, in 2014, I took another huge step and founded a nonprofit organization called Emerald City Critters. Uh, I believe uh, first shooting in public and doing good with our incredibly creative and beautiful costumes is one, absolutely one of the best aspects of furry fandom. And along the way, we got our uh, federally recognized 501c3 certification, and today our organization has expanded to more than 30 members, and we have uh, done events for such great charities as the ALS Association, American Cancer Society, Arthritis Foundation, Puget Sound Komen, and many, many more, uh, helping to raise money and support great causes. So in closing, if you would have asked me 15 years ago if I ever would be involved with so many leadership roles, I would have said, no way. There, that's not the job of a shy kid with no self-confidence that just kept to himself. But my involvement in furry fandom, and fursuiting in particular, has really helped me break those boundaries that I imposed on myself growing up and enabled me to grow as a person, as an event organizer, as a content creator, and a leader. So I ask you, everyone in this room, think about the ways that you've seen growth and improvement in yourselves through the furry fandom. 
Maybe it's helped you gain confidence, learn new skills in art or costume making, or even just socially in, in making new friends with common interests. I know for me it's done all of those and so much more. When you put together the amazing creativity, diversity, and talent that's in the furry fandom, the sky is the limit as to how much we can grow both individually and as a community. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Thank you all so much.